Leonardo da Vinci loved feet. His notebooks are littered with musings on the anatomical and physical properties of the human foot, as well as examinations of feet in different animal species. In fact, he's quoted as saying, the human foot is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. And he's right, the human foot is indeed an engineering marvel. It not only supports the weight of the entire body, but it allows us to move at a range of speeds in a precise, energy-efficient way. It adapts to uneven surfaces, feeds back to our brain to maintain balance, provides leverage for propulsion, and gives us traction to move ourselves forward. Let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the foot and see just why da Vinci loved it so. The skeletal foot consists of 26 bones. There are seven short, irregularly shaped tarsal bones, and 19 long metatarsal and phalangeal bones projecting outwards from them. The tarsal bones resemble the carpals in your hands, and they probably come from a similar origin. The first of the tarsals is the talus, which is the only bony connection between your foot and leg. Directly below the talus tarsal is the subtalar joint, an articulation with the heel bone, or calcaneus, and the navicular tarsal, which is part of the midfoot. The subtalar joint is the largest percentage surface area of any joint in the human body, and subsequently provides a huge range of motion that can help the foot adapt to all sorts of terrains. The first and second metatarsal bones also have a wide degree of up and down motion that allows the foot to change shape with its running surface. Looking at the arrangement of the bones in the foot, we can see that the only parts of the entire structure to directly contact the ground are the bottom of the calcaneus and the heads of the metatarsals. This means all of the weight of your body that comes down through the talus tarsal is distributed into the arch of your foot before being transmitted to the ground through these points of contact. This arch structure is a great example of the genius of the foot. We know from bridges that arches are an excellent way to redistribute stress into compressive forces and massively increase the amount of strain a structure can endure. In addition to the stress reduction properties of the tarsal arch, the foot also has properties that dissipate energy before it can even reach the bones. An example of how the foot does this is through the use of plantar fat pads in the heel and forefoot. These are fibro-adipose structures that compress and deform when the foot strikes the ground, absorbing energy in much the same way as viscoelastic dampers used in earthquake-resistant buildings. Studies have shown that up to 50% of the energy entering these fat pads is dissipated before it can be transmitted to the bones of the foot. And this energy dissipation actually increases with higher running speeds. Another engineering marvel of the foot acts not only to relieve stresses, but as an energy conservation mechanism. Joining the calcaneus tarsal to the distal foot is the fibrous plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis. This is a fibroelastic structure that can stretch minimally when tensioned, with a powerful recoil when released. A great example of how this works is using the combined truss and windlass analogy. At rest, the plantar fascia is relatively loose, but when pressure is put onto the foot, for example during running, the plantar fascia becomes stretched and taut and begins to store elastic potential energy. This first raises the arch of the foot and makes it become more rigid allowing the many bones to work together as one. Thus reducing energy loss by bones sliding against one another and allowing the foot to act as a rigid lever that can be used to push forward. Then, as the weight through the foot is redirected, the tense plantar fascia can recoil and release its stored energy to aid in propulsion forward. The plantar fascia acting in this way is theorized to contribute 8 to 17% of the mechanical energy required for each step, as well as acting to turn the foot from 26 individual bones into a single unit and back again, rapidly as the gait cycle repeats. Da Vinci was right to be impressed by the engineering of the human foot. It's clear that evolution has crafted it into a masterpiece of energy dissipation, redirection and conservation. These mechanisms are probably some of the factors that contributed to human beings becoming the best long-distance running animals on the planet, and are at least partly responsible for our advancement up the food chain to become the dominant species we are today. So next time you're out for a run, have a think about how clever your feet are. Marvel at their design, and see if you can think of ways to apply what their anatomy has taught us to new, novel situations. Make Leonardo da Vinci proud. If you like this new style of video, 
remember to subscribe to our channel and drop us a comment below with what you'd like to see us cover next. I hope you learned something and have a great day.